I would like to invite all global women to attend the 2019 summit in Basel. The canton of Baselstadt combines great economic strength with a high quality of life in a relatively small area. This is the result of our innovative and cosmopolitan outlook on social and urban matters. Everything we do is focused on sustainable growth and in this way we promote the canton of Baselstadt combines great economic strength with a high quality of life in a relatively small area. This is the result. I would like to invite all global women to attend the 2019 summit in Basel. The canton of Baselstadt combines great economic strength with a high quality of life in a relatively small area. This is the result of our innovation. I would like to invite all global women to attend the 2019 summit in Basel. Of all these people, who do you see as top manager? Just 24% of senior roles across the world are held by women. The higher the position, the fewer women are in charge. So what's the problem? Stereotypes. When talking about leaders, everyone presumes they are men. Automatically. MasterCard decided to make people use their own head, not just act like robots. Introducing, I'm not a robot. Every day, millions of people pass reCAPTCHA to prove they are not robots. We change the regular reCAPTCHA to shift people's thoughts on female leaders to prove they are not robots. We change the regular reCAPTCHA to shift people's thoughts on female leaders. We put up random stock photos of men and women instead of standard pictures. are the future leader. We have to be confident and we have to see that urgent call and we have to take on that responsibility. Irene used to say to me, men make history, but 
we women make men. Is that true? <laughs> but uh, may I add up one more phrase? I really feel of mine. Yes, men made all the history, but we women will make history. I had a small mantra about well-being and moving things forward. Conversational commerce, to give you an example, is when you are buying something where you're talking to an a device such as Alexa or a Google. Paula Assis with us. Um... She's general manager of Latin America for IBM. About, what about you, Ana Paula, from IBM? So, um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I think that we have to take into consideration that there are many ch there are challenges in all levels. Uh, but one area that uh, is critical for us is really when we think about leadership. Because when we talk about in the front and in the back end to really put together the end-to-end -end story for them to go together. I see, you know, um, the complementary um, from the skill set. Yeah. So now, given that we have, you know, the customer facing the cyber security, the GDPR, yeah. now, you know, moving to cloud, how complex, mm -hmm. you know, the whole IT environment, is there any certain skill set? that you're looking, f that ISV can bring, you know, given that now Sam, they provide you with the asset, mm. the asset management, mm. what mm. customer currently using in the IT environment. Yeah. Where's the area we can help customer optimize or drive cost saving, mm. for example. Ultimately what the customer is looking for is what is the differentiator. <laughs> And in 2017, she was selected for the Women in FinTech Power List by Innovate Finance UK. She's the chairperson of the MBA Advisory Board at Durham University. And today, she'll tell us how blockchain technology disrupts business models. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Please help me welcome to the stage Kamalesh Lardi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here today. So what we've been hearing so far in the Blockchain Summit track is quite a lot of information about uh, deep diving into blockchain use cases and the technology aspect of things. So what I'd like to do now is maybe take a step back and zoom out a little bit and have a look at um, how disruptive technologies actually impact traditional business models, and then look at some of the use cases within, um, or use cases for blockchain across various industries. And then I'd like to deep dive into the Houston Community College because business is, in, is my passion. I love to make something out of nothing. I love to contribute to the American economy. Taking classes at Houston Community College, it helped me put this business plan together. That business plan that brought me to where I am today. With the education I got from Houston Community College, I've been able to establish and create nation ways. We are the service provider for small business owners, Fortune 500 campus. Thank you very much for ha having me here, uh, Irene, and, and uh, a great pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, Iceland, as was explained, in 2017, we passed 
what I think is a, is a groundbreaking legislation, making it mandatory for companies to have an equal pay certification for their employees. And it is a significant change from the legislation that we have had for the past decades that have not been working on simply just banning pay discrimination without any further action. So now it's my real honour to um, introduce Minister Penicou, who is the Minister of Labour for France. Um, again, from a bio perspective, it's very interesting that you also spent many years at um, Danone um, from a business perspective, um, in HR as well, um, from 2008 till 2014, I saw. Um, and you also have um, co-founded EVE, the Leadership Development Programme for Women. But in your role now, since 2017, you've really been driving a, a big overhaul, a very radical and innovative overhaul of the French Labour Code. And so I'm delighted, Minister Pinnacle, please um, tell us about what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, I'm so glad to be back at the Global Summit of Women to see so many friends with an outstanding French delegation and all, all of you. Thank you, Arine, to give me this opportunity to speak with you of something that is so important for all of us. It's equal pay and equal opportunity of careers. Why is it so important? First, it's obvious. Uh, it's a question of social justice. There's absolutely no reason no acceptable reason why a woman would be paid less than a man for the same value and the same work. It's obvious, it's not the case. And the second thing is that it's much more than that. Having the financial autonomy gives you the freedom. And without financial autonomy, you don't have the freedom. Freedom to choose your life, to fight against violence and harassment, freedom to have a future, freedom to give you the possibility to give a future for your children, especially the daughter. And it's very interesting to see that when IMF say that if all women were paid as men for the same jobs, it would be plus 3% of GDP worldwide. And guess what? what how will we invest the money more that can have? Most of the fun, it's about education, health, and at the, at the end, it's common good. So it's good for it's a question of social justice, but also a question of business, economy, and improvement of the world. It is an honor to be here today to speak to this audience because it's about women's health. I'm a medical doctor, I'm passionate about this topic, and I've learned while doing medicine where we stand today. I believe there is a strong need to look at health and well-being under the sex and gender lens. And this is the only way to move from what we name today, according to Eric Topol, shallow medicine towards precision medicine. Precision medicine, it is what the future, hopefully, is bringing ahead of us. And it is bringing the right medicine to the right moment at the right patients. This will impact cost, and this will be, you know, the way health system will become sustainable for the future. But for doing this, we need to understand how disease acts and how they do move. What we heard from my colleague here are examples of uh, diseases which are affecting women. And we know that it's breast cancer, that it is cervical cancer. This is what we call bikini medicine. When it's about well-being and health in women, it's not only bikini area, but it is much more beyond. In fact, any disease implies differences in the way women and men experience it. And I will With me to talk about integrity at ABB are Diane de Servitor, our General Counsel, and Hannah Altman, the Chief Integrity Officer. Diane, ABB used to talk a lot about compliance, and now we talk about integrity. What is the difference? Right, well, you know what? Integrity is doing what's right, even though no one knows that uh, this is what we do. Welcome CEO, Alison Robinson. Hi, Alison. Hi, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for being here and congrats on being a lady boss. So let's talk about the mom project. It's kind of like 
Match.com for moms? Exactly. So we're the matchmaker between 80,000 women who are coming to the platform looking for flexible work with employers that respect work and life needs. I want to go back to Johnny Drive Eating crawfish and watching my so-called life I wanna go back, yeah. I wanna do all the things that I used to do. So I'm waking up for Cali school. I want some snowballs, man. And some chameleon grill. Or trying to stop is cool. I wanna rock where the people don't judge you. They don't hang with you if they don't fuck with you. But red season where they got the Zulu. Throw a beat at you if you're real rude. She's just a girl from the night, from the night, from the night. Just a girl from the nine, just the king from the nine. She's just a girl from the nine, from the nine, from the nine. nine. She's just a king from the nine. Don't hold back, you the nine. Women, you are the future leader. We have to be confident and we have to see that urgent call and we have to take on that responsibility. to share is the fact that, you know, many years ago, I learned, and I think a lot of us have learned, have learned this uh, valuable lesson that building a business is all about building relationships, right? It's those very important connections that we make. And for a business owner who's sitting alone in her office, working in a vacuum, that's a problem. You need to be connected. So I feel like the biggest problem that enterprising women solves for our readers part of our community is to really make them feel that they're part of something bigger than themselves. Care concittadine, cari concittadini, il 23 settembre siamo chiamati a votare sull'iniziativa per la sovranità alimentare. That women face in every G20 economy. Uh, when we're talking about economic equity, uh, we're talking about a good half of the world's population not being part of that inclusive economy that we would all like to strive forward.